The Tucson tragedy, followed by others in Aurora, Colorado, and of course, Newtown, Connecticut, have spurred efforts to control who can go into a store and buy a gun and what kind of gun they can buy. But maybe none of that will matter much longer. My next guest is spearheading technology that could soon allow you to easily make any kind of gun you want from the comfort of your own home with the simplicity of hitting print on your computer. He's been named one of Wired Magazine's 15 most dangerous people in the world. Cody Wilson joins me from New York. Cody, you're only 25 years old. You're already one of the most dangerous people in the world, apparently, and you're the subject of a new documentary called Print, Fire, Shoot. Why do people think you're so terrifying? I think uh, the spirit of terrorism is playing in what we're doing. I understand why people might be terrified. We're using the banality of these machines that otherwise were used to create innocuous objects to create something that has deadly import. And the problem is this technology might become so diffuse one day that uh, anyone might be suspect or uh, any latent cri like criminality could be expressed by anyone who wants to print a gun. I understand. But you're doing this with what's called a 3D printer. Explain for our viewers, is this something that really anyone would be able to do? Well, the, so the assumption is one day the technology will become more ubiquitous and, and widespread, it'll fall in price, and materials will be developed in, in a better place than they are now. So, yes, if you were to have one in your, in your home and you had the gun file, you could just pr click print and have the gun. Are you not concerned at all that, that sharing this technology with everyone, with children, with the mentally unbalanced, exactly... Is it, are you not concerned that this is exactly what this country does not need right now? Will you feel responsible at all if, if someone uses this to kill an innocent person? Oh, I mean, we'll see how I feel in the eventuality that that happens. I'm, I'm willing to hold out some judgment. I, I don't know how I'll feel, right? but I do believe in equality of access to quality production. I think this is something worth doing, and I don't think that we can collectively make a decision to withhold things from people before they do anything wrong. There, there's something like 250 million guns in America. Is there any sort of legislation that you think could prevent people from getting a gun, especially with this technology coming down the pike? No, sure. I mean, any kind of legislation might prevent people at the margin, but I'm, I'm interested in exploding any, any regime at all, moving the, moving the fight from the physical to the visible, if you will. I mean, if, when guns become digitized, what would you have to do to stop people from getting this? Invade their civil liberties, step on their internet. These are intolerable. I can't imagine that gun manufacturers are excited about this idea. Have you heard from any of them about I have, this? I haven't. The, t the technology really isn't in the place that the media runs with it and suggests that it is. It's, it's still in its infancy. So I, I don't see a direct competition or even an in a talk or a six hour might, uh, might be or might look like. They're, they're not equivalent. You say it's in its infancy. When will people be able to do this? Oh, well, to have a printable gun, it's my intention to have that done by the end of this month. And we're at the end of March now, so it's my intention to have it done by the end of April. Cody Wilson, thank you very much. Thank you. Now to a frightening story on the West Coast, a whole neighborhood block in danger of falling off a cliff.